scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. He's restoring. He's doing it again. Someone give him thanks. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Thank him from the depth of your heart. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. We give you praise, we give you thanks. To you be all the glory to the God that doeth wonders. Thank you for the manifest presence of your spirit in our midst, for your power present to heal, present to deliver, present to restore. In Jesus' name we are praying. Can you lift your voice in one minute and cry out your expectation before the Lord with focus, dedication, and faith? Lord, I am here tonight. Give me an encounter. Go ahead and pray. Give me an encounter by your spirit. For someone you encounter may mean healing. For someone you encounter may mean deliverance, total deliverance. For someone you encounter may be the impartation of wisdom, direction, breakthrough, restoration. Is someone praying? So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Yeah. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Pray, let faith rise from within your spirit. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time from the depth of your heart. Let hope Shaba Rakosa Branda Geva Rakosia. Let faith, let it rise tonight darkness trembles in your holy light let faith rise darkness trembles in your holy light Kabarato skabrande geberetusia dabalatosha. 
Radabalaka Sabrenda Beleka to Sabrigadesh. We shake away unbelief tonight. We are before the all wise God, the all powerful God, the healer, the deliverer, the lifter, the one who anoints. He has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. They go from strength to strength, as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Turn again the captivity of Zion, even like the streams of the Negev. For they that sow in tears, they shall reap in joy. a man that he should lie God is not a man that he should lie God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent God is not a man that he should lie everything God has told you in your lifetime you will see it come to pass let me shake unbelief everything God has told you Provided your spirit received it in your lifetime, you will see it come to pass. Everything God has told you and prophesying to you, that in your lifetime, my God will make you see it come to pass. If he says you are lifted in your lifetime, you will see yourself lifted. If he says you will laugh in your lifetime, you will laugh. Do you believe this? When God speaks, He speaks because there is an ability behind His word that compels what He has said to come to pass. Hallelujah. If you ever hear God utter a word as a revealed word to you in your spirit or on the strength of the, an encounter with scripture, you must know that at the back of all the speakings of God is the power to bring it to pass. It says, blessed is she that believes for unto her, it does not just stop at believing, there shall be a performance, not of everything, but of those things that were spoken by the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to encourage you, it's an unusual service, shake away unbelief. Don't come and waste your time spectating, don't come and waste your time doubting, will God touch me, will he visit me? And don't just come to clap for others, as wonderful as that is. Let there be an insistence, a holy anger and a determination. Lord, something must happen to my life today. Lift your voice and pray. Something must happen to my destiny today. Someone who is serious with God, pray. Someone who is determined to leave this place rejoicing, pray. 
someone who is angry at the reign of darkness over your life pray Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God.
There is a river that is flowing in this place tonight. I saw this vision while I was praying. Now I'm seeing the vision again. It's a river that was in Ezekiel 47 flowing from the east side of the temple, flowing to destinies, flowing to lives, flowing to businesses. The river that flows from the throne, bringing life to everything that has died, bringing life to every dead organ, bringing life to every dead cell, bringing life to every dead business, bringing life to every dead destiny. Hear ye the word of the Lord, that which was dead comes alive now. 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 Dead organs, they come alive now. Dead businesses, they come alive now. Dead destinies, they come alive now. Dead prayer lives, dead passion for the things of God. Hallelujah. presence of God is mighty even in this place you are not wasting your time immersed in his presence immersed in his glory that is where miracles happen that is where signs and wonders happen that is where transformation encounters happen let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. It's our prayer tonight. Let it cover all the earth. Ah. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. upon your life when that glory rests upon your destiny when that glory rests upon your ministry all that will be left is beauty and grace and power supernatural manifestations that's what happens when the glory comes that's what happens when the glory rests upon you let it come Let it cover all the earth. 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 Let it cover all the earth.
If you're here and you're using a stretcher or you're using a walking stick, you cannot walk. Stand up and begin to walk now. Stand up and begin to walk now. Begin to do what you could not do now. Begin to do what you could not do now. Begin to do what you could not do now. Begin to do what you could not do now. There's someone you could not move your hands. It's like you had a problem. I want you to begin to move those hands now. Move your hand, do what you could not do. The healing power of Jesus is already touching people. Touching people in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone you are following online. You have a problem with your neck. I don't know, it's like you have the neck bracelets. In the name of Jesus, begin to turn it left and right left and right the power of god is upon you right now in the name of jesus christ 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 now i want you to bring out before we sit down all those that the power of God will come on now I will tell you what the impartation is for and then that grace will rest upon them and then will be seated this is holy ground and if you come here you must come believing you must come expecting hallelujah whilst the worship team were singing about restoration I heard loud in my spirit and I will restore and I will restore. Now I know that this applies to everybody, but there are specific families that God wants to visit right now. And the power of God will come on them. I want you to bring them out right now. In the name of Jesus, every family that has been ordained for restoration by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare may that grace rest upon you now. Please bring them out very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that grace rest upon you, representing your family. Representing your family. Every family that has been tied down. You have lost things, you have lost people, you have lost opportunities. I bring you the restoring power of Jesus. The restoring power of Jesus. The restoring power from the front to the back whether you are an usher or not please help them in the name of Jesus I bring you restoration even as revealed by the Spirit of the Living God restoration 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 come up and sing for me that song you sang on restoration the song you just sang now where's to sing that song singing on restoration Everything that was lost, restore. That's the grace that is resting upon you now. Everything that was lost, restore. Eba shabarato siyatabas. Eba rate kaparos katiyatabas. Everything that was lost, restore. You will restore and restore. sing it I'm still praying in the name of Jesus every manipulation on the times of your destiny such that time has gone and you've not been able to achieve anything I place a mantle upon you tonight take that grace may that anointing rest upon you restoration 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 receive it in the name of Jesus Everything that was 
spirit the time has come I don't know I don't know who this word is for but there is an anointing that is coming with this word I'm seeing the number 13 the Lord is saying the time has come receive that grace bring them out receive that grace the time has come it will not be delayed again the time has come the season has come the time has come the season has come by the spirit of the living God the time has come, the Bible says, to appoint unto them that morning Zion. I prophesy to you, as by the Spirit, the time has come. 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 In the name of Jesus, for someone is the time for laughter. For someone is the time for resurrection. For someone is the time for advancement. But by all means, I speak to your spirit. The time has come. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, John remain in the wilderness until his season of appearing. When your time has come, it also means every closed door must open. Please be serious tonight. Let your heart be open in the name of Jesus. Anyone under the sound of my voice, for as long as you are connected here, in the name of Jesus, if there is a door that has been closed by witchcraft, hear me, close. By the manipulations of men, in the name of Jesus, that door opens now. 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 Hallelujah. Seven. And I'm seeing fire coming on their hands physically. Physically. And the Lord is telling me, for some of you by this impartation, jobs, even jobs you did not apply for. Your hand is a symbol of productivity. Right now, eight of them. I don't know where you are. May that fire locate your hands. Locate your hands. In the name of Jesus, compelling productivity, compelling productivity, compelling productivity, compelling productivity, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All this, my footballer friends, come. Your lifting has come. Oh, oh, oh.
listen to me. Gentlemen, listen to me. Listen to me. You see, I want, I want, let me have your attention. Do you know why I'm praying for you? I'm not praying for you because you are lifting your football boots up. And I'm not lifting, praying for you because you like football. No. We're in a season where God is releasing envoys and sending people across strategic places. Listen to me. The purpose of the lifting of the saints is not just for fame. The purpose of the lifting of the saints is not just for noise. Are we together? There are many of you as ordinary as you are because in addition to your skill, you have recognized that there is a grace that comes upon men. I want to release something upon your life. You will marvel. You don't have to kneel. Father, these gentlemen have come. They want to go to the sports in the name of Jesus. The apostolic has the mandate. An anointing will come on you now. And by this anointing, may you go to the nations. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that anointing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May that anointing take you to the nations. May that anointing take you to the nations. You will become voices in the area of sports. You will love Jesus and you will serve him. You will bring many to the fold in the name of Jesus Christ. And hear me. I want you to believe that what has come upon you tonight will truly change your life forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe this? This is more than just excelling in career. You are a footballer? Bring this small boy up for me. Look at this. Look at the little boy. Come. And he's small. What? Don't just bring these children. Don't waste our time, oh, please. I hope the children know what we are doing. If you're a parent here and we call a case, make sure your child is aware of what we are doing, please. You're a footballer. Who brought this child? Who is a parent? Parents, where are you? You are his sister. He's a footballer. How old is he? He's eight years. What's his name? Huh? Derek. Ota Derek. What's your name? Derek. You want to play football? You love Jesus? You too, you want to play football? Huh? Who brought these ones? They, do they want to play football? <laughs> Don't give your parents heart attack. Oh. Some of your parents are planning to have uh, doctors and engineers. That doesn't mean that football is not good. Who brought this child? Your, your son? You are, you're the father? Yeah, yeah. He wants to play football. Oh, you are the parents. Oh, you are aware that the children are here. That's just what I needed to verify. Listen, do you know when children love God and seek Him at this age, it is beyond holding the football boots. It's a miracle. I pray that God will bless you. I pray that God will bless you. And my footballer friend, may God take you high. You will play for the king. In the name of Jesus. Every one of you will come back and testify here. In Jesus' name I pray. Return back to your seat rejoicing. God bless you. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down. Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to our miracle service for the month of July. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is already moving in the midst of his people. Who is Silas? Who is Silas? You're by the name Silas. This person, it looks from my vision, it's like you're not even inside this auditorium. 
Silas. Who is that? I just heard the name Silas. I want to speak over your life and then we'll be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying for Silas, yet it's a lazy voice I'm hearing shouting under the anointing. Is it strange how these spiritual things happen? I'm praying for these people, yet in the spirit, the sound I'm hearing is the voice of a lady shouting under the anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, Silas, by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is giving you strange access. Strange access. Listen to what I'm saying. God will give you access to people. God will give you access to opportunities. Let the grace rest upon you right now. Go and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated for a minute. Let your heart be very sensitive. I want to start um, officially tonight with an apology number relative to the thousands and thousands of people who are here week in, week out, especially in a day like this. And because of the rains, the protocol department had to walk a system with people around, so you find a lot of congestion. Um, my sincere apologies, especially to those who are having to be squeezed across various places. I'm sure that they will do their best to rearrange people outside as soon as the weather is calm enough. But whilst that is happening, please bear with us. Sorry for the inconveniences. Some of you are having to sit down, to stand, to stay just anywhere. There are so many people and the auditorium here only accounts for a very, very small fraction of the people and we can only make do with all of the spaces available it is my prayer that in the name of Jesus soon enough God will take us to a bigger place where everyone will be able to come in in the name of Jesus if you believe that shout a believing amen. amen life is in faces and this is only a process and will follow it with pride with joy and with every sense of responsibility some of you will remember these days in the future and it will be a reason to praise God hallelujah so that is my apology particularly to all those who had to be moved from outside so so many of them women with children probably some who are not in the best state of health sorry for all of the stress that you may um, have had to go through the Lord will do you good in Jesus name I welcome everyone tonight all our international guests may the Lord bless you and all who have taken the time to worship with us you are blessed in Jesus name hallelujah um, particularly we're honored to appreciate and celebrate the wife of the chief of defense staff um, Mrs. Lillian Musa, God bless you, Ma. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here. And then the wife to the Chief of Special Service and Duties, the Army Headquarters, Mrs. Rejoice Wesley. God bless you, Ma. Thank you sincerely for your presence. And every other person who has come, this is a house of honor. And we honor, we appreciate you. We acknowledge you. And together the Lord will do us good tonight in jesus name hallelujah the first thing i want to talk about is in psalms 22 22 the power of testimonies there are many people who do not experience the mighty hand of god in their lives simply because they have not laid it to heart to make known his deeds in the midst of his people psalm 22 22 Hallelujah. He says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. It's one thing to praise the Lord in your room. It's one thing to praise the Lord with your family. 
but it's another thing to come before the congregation of God's people and to testify the goodness of God. It says, Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works unto the children of men. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage every believer, those connecting from across the globe, it is, it is very profitable first to you and then to God's people to testify of the goodness of God in your life. Sometimes because of our limitation in terms of time constraint, we don't do justice to testimonies, especially in a miracle service like this. And sometimes I feel pain in my heart uh, because we have to respect the time. Miracle services everywhere around the world require extended periods of time because you are really meeting the needs of people and as different as we are, so are our needs. And so we do our best to make sure by the spirit that we attend to as many people. But then you must have it as a culture and as a responsibility, a kingdom responsibility that when God moves in your life in any way, in any form, in any fashion, lay it to heart to testify before the people of God. Uh, testimony is beyond acknowledging that the man who God used to bring that miracle to you is powerful. It's more than verifying the truthfulness or the authenticity of that man. Hallelujah. Those are very tertiary benefits of testimonies. Essentially, testimonies help the people understand that God is at work in your life in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. You must lay it to heart. There are many of you who, if you are to count your blessings, is like, is, is an avalanche already. And yet nobody can praise God. Nobody has been able to reproduce the good hand of God by reason of your testifying. So I owe it to you as a responsibility to challenge you. Hallelujah. Shortly we're going to be ministering to people, the sick, and lay it to heart to testify without coercion, without manipulation. You don't have to be manipulated, arm twisted to come and say, God did this, did that, no. But it is important that when you see the hand of God in your life, you must be quick to celebrate his grace. There were 10 lepers, the Bible teaches, who Jesus met and he gave them an instruction. He said, go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, they discovered that healing had happened to them from leprosy. And only one returned back to say thank you. And you thought Jesus would say, oh, wonderful. He says, were there not ten? Where are the remaining nine? And to the one who came to say thank you, he administered wholeness. Hallelujah. So it is important if God opens a door as much as possible, let the people of God know that he still opens doors. If he heals, don't just say thank you, I will go and if it's an issue that requires medical verification, we have a very professional medical team at the back. You can always go and verify, is it your blood pressure? Is it some healing from a terminal disease? You see that, but by all means, when you see the goodness of God in your life, either real time as we minister, when you are beckoned upon to testify, or as you go, you find out that the hand of God has come upon you in a unique way. And that includes our global family online. Make it a point of duty and let it be an orientation in your heart that you will always return to say thank you. Is someone learning? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. For tonight, very quickly, let's look at Mark chapter 4. I'll begin my reading from verse 35. There are many miracles of Jesus as recorded in the synoptics. The synoptics meaning Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call them the Gospels. And I have taken out time to study all 37 of the miracles. There are 37 recorded miracles as captured in the Gospels by Jesus Christ. And one of them that applies to the miracle service tonight is calming the storm. This struck my spirit while I studied preparing for this service. And the Spirit of the Lord put it in my heart to share along these lines as we trust God for mighty things. By the way, I hope you came with a point of contact. I hope you came with your prayer request. I hope you also came with your faith strong and alive. 
I hope you beckoned on your loved ones who are not here to connect by faith because distance is no barrier. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, Matthew, Mark chapter 4, the Bible says, And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, reading to 41, Let us pass over to the other side. So you must understand the background of the story. They were intending to go to the other side. The other side meaning the land of the gatherings, where they will meet the madman in Gadara. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships, 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. Follow carefully. There arose a great storm of wind. The Bible says, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? 39. He arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea or the waves obey him? Hallelujah. A storm, I wrote here, is a violent disturbance of the atmosphere with strong winds, with rain, with thunder, with lightning. So when you talk about a storm, it's usually a violent disturbance of the atmosphere, usually characterized by a very strong wind, rain, thunder, and lightnings. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says a storm arose, you can imagine the scenario already that this was a violent disturbance of the atmosphere, the environment. It would have been dark, hazy, with a lot of rain, thunder, lightning, and so on and so forth. I have one more definition for a storm. And I wrote here a disturbance of the normal condition of the atmosphere. So generally storms have to do with anything that can disturb the normal atmosphere or the normal cause of a thing hallelujah when the bible says that they were going to the other side they encountered a storm and that storm brought a number of challenges that i want us to consider tonight as it applies to our hearts are you ready number one i said here that storms affect vision the moment there is a storm, a disruption in the atmosphere, physically now, geographically, and that also applies spiritually. The first thing that storms affect is vision. When there is a storm, usually you are not able to see far. Hallelujah. For many of us who have had these kinds of experience in, in flight or flying, you find out that sometimes there is a visibility requirement that the pilot must be able to have in order to take off and in order to land. If for any reason he's in the air and that, that he's not able to see far, he may even have to reverse. Hallelujah. Storms affect vision. You are not able to see very far. At least the closest range you are not able to see. Sometimes as short as meters away you become blinded when there are storms storms sustain the ability to blind men from seeing you're not able to see far when there are storms that disrupt your focus disrupt your life number two storms i wrote here affect visibility please pay attention storms affect visibility that means that when you are in a, a very chaotic, you know, like some storm, some tornado, or so on and so forth, you find out that the person who may be at the other side, even if he or she has the ability to help you, they are unable to see you. Storms don't just affect vision, they affect visibility. 
in this story the bible tells us that when jesus began the journey there were other ships but by the time the storm arose there was no other ship that could see the situation they were in to even help them storms can affect visibility so that those who can see you and offer help are not able to see is someone hearing storms affect vision storms affect visibility number three storms affect your voice your voice here also talks about your impact if you shout in a storm you are only wasting your time nobody can hear you aside those who might be in the same boat or ship with you it is vain to shout and try to wait for attention a storm has a unique way of affecting your voice it can affect your impact when the storms of life come upon a man even the great they become their impact diminishes their voices diminish and they are not able to hear them hallelujah if we were outside and there's some heavy rain with clouds and all kinds of things, thunderings, you know, flood happening everywhere, even if I'm trying to calm you or give you direction, you most likely may not pay attention to me because the storm can disrupt my voice. Even though what I'm saying is correct, I cannot be heard. For someone here, it's possible that God has said all kinds of wonderful things about your life. You are in ministry, you are in business, but the storms of life have so diminished your voice, hence your impact. You have a lot to say. You have a lot that has been buried in your spirit, but nobody is able to hear you because a storm has arisen in your life. Tonight is your night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we learning? Number four, very quickly storms affect movement and they affect speed there is nobody who can manifest speed in the midst of storms the moment there is a storm whether you are flying whether you are by sea whether you are by road even whilst you are walking one of the characteristic features of, of, of storms is that they impede movement if you are driving for instance and there is a very serious rain with thunderings and you cannot see you find out most cars just park and patiently wait because trying to drive in that condition you may jeopardize your life and those who are in the car so if you have an appointment say probably with a doctor or somebody you will have to be patient storms can affect movement storms can af affect speed that god told you that by july certain things should have happened in your life in your family your ministry your business but by january storms financial storms marital storms storms in your health and they can affect your movement it was very clear that the movement the motion of jesus and his disciples had been affected and impeded by the storms I can tell you if you have not experienced the limiting power of storms then you are yet to live well on earth because storms happen to all men and for those who have experienced storms at any level it can be painfully delaying you can stand in the same position because it is raining and you are not even able to see and God help you that your headlight is not working well or your wipers are not working well or your battery just dies then you remain there helpless with the ability to drive but you are limited not by your skill but by the storm hallelujah nothing affected your driving nothing affected your seeing but simply because you happen to find yourself in a city or a, a scenery where there is a serious storm it can affect your movement they woke Jesus Christ they said something is wrong is someone learning already so number one, storms affect vision, your ability to see far. Number two, storms affect visibility. Visibility from you to others, but more importantly, visibility from others towards you. Three, storms affect your voice. Number four, storms affect movement. They affect speed. Are you ready for number five? Number five, storms bring fear and discouragement. Every time there is a storm, as we learn from this story, there is always fear and there is discouragement. Give us Jonah chapter 1 and then verse 5. We'll read verse 5, then jump to verse 10. 
this was another story of a storm the man Jonah a prophet the Bible says he ran away from God's instruction and he was on his way going the other side and the Bible says that a storm arose it says and the mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God and cast forth the worst the goods that they came these were businessmen they lost everything to lighten the ship the Bible says, but Jonah was gone down to the side of the ship and he lay there fast asleep. Go to verse 10. The Bible says, then the men were exceedingly afraid and said unto him, why hast thou done this? You know, and so on and so forth. They were afraid. Even if you're a professional pilot, your captain, you're a professional uh, driver, you've been driving for years, the moment a storm happens, it has your experience almost does not count in the midst of a storm. Many of you have watched all kinds of um, tornadoes and hurricanes and all kinds of water and wind conditions that have caused catastrophe across the nations of the earth. It will sweep cars, it will sweep ships, it will sweep planes, it will sweep, sweep individuals, adults. Does not seem to regard experience. It will carry everything along its path. Storms can bring fear, can bring discouragement. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 40, the verse before the last, as we read in that scripture, Jesus himself acknowledged the fact that they were afraid. He says, why are ye so fearful? How is it that you do not have faith? There are many of you who were more courageous 10 years ago than you are now. Because storms had not come. You were full of life, full of energy. You were optimistic about your life and your destiny. Probably when you were 19, 20, 25. Now you are 35, 45, 55, 65. And it looks like the more you grow in age, the more fear and discouragement comes upon you. Have you seen that happen to people? That the older they are, the more they be all kinds of fears. Is this how I'm going to die without taking care of my children? I lost my job five years ago. So so you see the once confident man the once confident woman a few years ago I've met a few people in my life that I knew before years ago and the level of their confidence was so contagious fast forward a few decades and you look at these people right now and their discouragement is almost transferable you have to leave that environment so that you do not become a victim of their fear and their discouragement how about those who are sad last year? They prayed and were optimistic about our nation, about the economy. And right now there are people living in fear, no job, no money, no whatever. When storms arise, they can target your faith. They can target attempts to bring fear to your life. So you see a man who is gifted with PhD, yet he's afraid. As afraid as an uneducated person. Are we together? Parents are afraid for their children. Children are afraid for their parents. The moment you hear that they're about to downsize, you are afraid. You are thinking now, could it be me? You now connect it with some dream that you had some time ago and it, you know, fear just swallows you up. The hearts of many in this season and in this time, failing them, even pastors, people in ministry, as at the point they were called of God, they were so optimistic. Some of them spoke among those who believed in them and were following them then. Oh, we are going places, we are serving the purposes of God to the nations. And years after, did you know that there are pastors that are even suicidal right now? People who have anointings, they have graces. And some of them are saying, I've tried everything in ministry. I've tried to advertise to tell people come to church. They have refused to come. I've tried to pray for the sick. They have refused to be healed. Everything I tried, I failed. I agree that I'm a failure. And some of them, even though there are people anointed by God after many years in Bible college, want to take their lives and destroy themselves today. How about men? There are many men today who are unable to provide for their families and it looks like shame and defeat is, is upon them, glaring upon their faces. Everything, men and circumstances, just tell them you are not man enough, you are not capable enough not to take care of your children, your wife, and all who are connected to you. Let me tell you the truth. When storms arise, it can shake you to the core. Are we together? How about the storm of sickness? 
that you begin to feel some pain somewhere in your body and you casually stroll to the hospital thinking they'll just recommend one drug or the other and they'll have to tell you sit down you see consultants discussing with themselves and they look at you and tell you look it looks like your situation return back for a test again and you see them still discussing and you say what is wrong they say honestly we have to tell you we found traces of cancer or traces of something and you are saying from where I prayed I think it was last week or so or week before last for an adorable child I'm not sure that child is up to 10 years probably less than 10 years and I was just coming out and and you know they called my attention and I looked at the child very happy I'm not sure the child I'm not even 10 I'm not sure if the child was up to six and they told me this child has cancer cancer of something the child was not even aware you know as a child you would not even know that you're on your way the child with joy and I said my goodness my God look how wicked the devil is if you have never been afraid in your life it's either because number one you are a liar or number two you have not lived long enough storms can shake even the great when Jesus was on his way to the cross the Bible tells us that he prayed the Bible does not record that he was afraid but we know that his humanity showed up and everybody saw it it was clear he said father if it be thy will take this cup off me what would be the reason why he would be pleading that the cup should be taken off him the cross was not just an easy thing for him to go and drop his hands and for the nails to drive in it was more than the physical death storms shake even the great Men of God cry, women of God cry, great people cry, encouragers cry. When storms come, it does not matter who you are, doesn't matter what your experience is. It can bring fear. The hearts of men can fail them. Is it not in your Bible that when Goliath rose up as a storm over the people of God, the warriors, these guys were masters. They were veterans of war. That was not their first battle. The Bible says their hearts failed them from the greatest to the least. None of them could dare Goliath of God, not even Saul himself. Until a young boy who came, who had been trained by God called David, that young teenager came and sought for permission to stand before Goliath. I know it's easy to laugh and dress well and smile and speak all the Christian languages and that is wonderful. The Bible demands that we become strong even in the midst of these things. But I can tell you there are some of you who are seated here right now. You're holding on to the last string of your courage, the last string of your faith. You are seated here right now and your landlord is sitting in front of your house too waiting for you to finish share the grace and come and meet him how about fees of children everything is increasing except your own revenue except your own finances let me tell you the truth storms can shake men it can bring you to a point where you ask where is god even the wife of job a woman purported to be strong she got to a point where she was weary she was exhausted discouraged no wonder the Bible says, have thou not known, has thou not seen the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. The Bible says he does not grow weary and he does not faint. There is no searching of his understanding that to those who are weak and weary and faint, he increases strength. The Bible says even the young men will be weary. Are we together now? Yes. Weariness is something that happens to all men in the presence of storms financial storms ministerial storms marital storms all kinds of things no wonder when angels appear to men are sent by god to them the usually the first words of the angels will be fear not fear not and for someone that is a prophetic word for you fear not i prayed that prayer for you last week i wish i would speak it again there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus Christ it will turn on to you for a praise storms bring fear and discouragement can I give you one more storms bring losses and pain this is true uncomfortably true with storms will usually come losses all kinds of losses with storm will come pain still Jonah chapter 1 and verse 5 the Bible tells us that these men were afraid and the Bible says they cast forth their wares when you read another version it will tell you their goods and all the things that they came these guys came to do business 
they had bought their things they were on their way back to give their families to give their children to increase their business their means of livelihood and in the presence of storms you see how dangerous storms can be in the presence of storms your life is the most valuable thing even the things that you may have worked for for years you are willing to throw it away to preserve your life for instance when they tell a man who has labored to build an estate labor to put things in place for his children and the children's children gathered all kinds of things and in one moment they will announce to you that your kidney has packed up for instance or you have some kind of cancer and you will need to go through chemo or something do you know at that point selling off your estate you can sell it for half the price it does not matter you just want to be alive never downplay what men can do when they gasp for life they can throw away anything their labor for years can vanish in one day storms truly bring losses COVID COVID taught us a very serious lesson people lost all kinds of things People had to mortgage their lives, their destinies, their livelihood simply because they needed to make ends meet. It brings losses and with losses, it brings pain. Nobody wants to lose anything, especially that which you labored for for years. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can imagine the pain that was in the life of Job. There arose a storm in the life of this man called Job. The first thing that happened was he lost everything that was valuable in his life except God, his wife, and his health. These were the only things that would remain. His children were lost, his goods. I hope you know the Bible says about Job that he was the richest man in the East. It was already inspiring to know that he was rich and wealthy. Then the Bible says the richest, the wealthiest of men in the East. But in one day, if it took 10 years, would have understood that it was a gradual decline. But in one day, lost all his sons, lost all his daughters, lost his cattle, lost his estate, his investments, everything left in one day. The only thing Job had was his relationship with God, his wife, and his life. And as if that were not enough, Satan comes again, plaguing Job with sicknesses. There were all kinds of boils that came out of his body, Job reduced himself to the dust of the earth. This was a man who moments ago was the wealthiest man and inspiration to all around the east. Now he had been reduced to nothing. And the wife had to stand close to him. Standing, committing her vow that she made while she married him. And she got angry, she got sad at a point. The Bible says she told him, do you still retain your integrity? He said, curse God and die. The woman was not wicked, she was tired. When people are tired, don't believe what they say. Sometimes they say things that don't make sense, they don't mean it. It's simply a product of exhaustion. Are we together? There are men who when they are exhausted, they can look at God and say, God, I hate you. Don't be too quick to judge. Exhaustion can reprogram your thinking. It can make you to say things to men and to God that you will end up regretting. Exhaustion can stretch men to do things that you cannot imagine. Hallelujah. She said, do you still hold on to your integrity? Cause God and die. And Job said, no, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. He says, I will wait. There is something I know about God that he will come. Hallelujah. When you go through storms, you lose many things and it brings you pain. Can I tell you, losing truly brings pain. There are people who have lost loved ones. There are people who have lost offices. There are people who have lost things. There are people who have lost opportunities. There are people who have lost relationships. There are people who have lost certain access, certain doors. It brings a lot of pain. I know someone who, true story, our, you know, the person had um, an accident and he had to quickly come out, but the car was damaged. You know, the, the, the gas was already leaking and he watched his car burn. There was nothing he could do. There was no way. There was no use trying to stop it. He stood there. He was safe. Just a few bruises. But he watched the car burn right in front of him. And all that was left was just the metals there. Everything. He left home with a healthy car. Happy, smiling. 
and by noon it was just the carcass of that car that was left there have you lost something in your life then you understand what pain is about hallelujah yes sir there are people who have lost loved ones it's taken them years there are people who have lost opportunities how about jobs I remember someone who sent me a text they received a letter rejoicing and then they got another letter again saying for whatever reason that initial letter had been terminated they are reviewing things within the office can you imagine after planning preparing to travel abroad rejoicing that a miracle has come a good salary structure you've started planning in your mind oh with this money my children will go to this suddenly another mail comes this is why the Lord brought you tonight. I want to show you what to do with storms. Storms, for many of us here tonight, whilst you are listening to me, it has affected your vision. You were once a visionary man. You were once a visionary woman. With precision, you could discuss any matter as far as purpose and destiny is concerned. You knew where you were going, but storms just arose and it beclouded your vision. Now you have no idea. For some of you, you came here for Koinonia for this miracle service and your first prayer request is to at least find a bearing. Do you know that storms sometimes can so affect you you do not even know where in the sea you are you don't know you cannot find your way you will need God to help you by use of a compass to even locate where you are within the sea some of us are rigmaroling around destiny we've not been able to get our bearing not because you are careless not because you're unspiritual it's just the reality of storms they have arisen and distracted your sense of vision how about visibility only God knows how many people would have located you by now and you would have used the leverage of their relationship and it would have accelerated your path towards destiny except that storms became so hazy they passed you and did not know you needed their help hallelujah is God speaking to us It is a terrible thing to shout for help and not have anyone help you simply because the noise of the storm is louder than the noise of your voice. You are shouting for help and yet people cannot hear you. Or you are speaking and they cannot hear you. Maybe there's a man of God here I'm speaking to. You have been speaking the counsel of God. You are sincere, uncompromised, with integrity, loving the Lord. Perhaps you are a businessman doing business with the dignity of integrity. Perhaps you are a family person running your home the best that you know and the best that you can except that the voice, the sound of the wind and the waves has so overwhelmed the sound of your efforts such that the best that you do cannot even be seen relative to the sound of the storm. And then for many people, you've been moving like a snail, moving like a tortoise as far as destiny is concerned because it has so impeded your pace when you started you were firing on all four cylinders and based on your plan certain things in destiny should have actualized but storms arose and now it's limited your impact in business in family in ministry you seem to just be crawling barely getting by why am i telling you all this because the one who calmed the storm is in this place tonight I'm announcing to you not just to remind you of the things you already know that the storms have done. I'm about to introduce him shortly. But let's appreciate the fact that the storms have done damage to people so that when he shows up, the he being Jesus, you will appreciate that which he brings and you will watch with shock and wonder as he tells the storm, Shalom, be still. This is why you came here tonight. If you do not know what the storms have done, when Jesus shows up, you may be careless about receiving from him. Sometimes it's good to let you see what situations through storms have done to you so that your heart can be opened. You can say, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. 
Many of you are living in fear. Do you know it's a terrible thing to live in fear? You cannot, fear erodes your sense of joy, your sense of peace. There is no optimism. Your life is stagnated, stunted. There's nothing drives you. There are people who, as young as they are, there is no passion, no zest, no zeal, nothing at all. You discuss anything about life, they are not interested. Why? Because some storm have arisen. If someone, respectfully speaking, who has, say, stage four cancer, and you come and you're speaking with the person, you tell the person, listen, we have an estate project, and right now we're going to build an estate. While you are talking, the person will just be looking at you. Because the doctor has told the person, you are two weeks left by the normal medical calculation. And here you are as a sincere business partner, charging that person and saying, we'll do great things. Or perhaps as a man of God, you're saying we'll go to the nations and that person is telling you, listen, I have just two weeks to leave, except a miracle happens. Your vision deflated, you live perpetually in fear, perpetually in fear, perpetually in fear. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. The psalmist had his own fear. He was compassed round about many, many times. That man fought many battles. The psalmist was not just a king. He was not just a worshiper. The psalmist was a warrior. He fought so many battles to a point that when it was in his heart to build God a house, God said it's a good thing. However, your hands have shed too much blood. I will not allow you with the same hand to build me a temple. And he gathered the material together to allow his son Solomon to build the temple. The temple would have been built by David, but David lived a life fighting enemies everybody hated him left right and center right from when he was a teenager David enjoyed the presence of God but one thing he was not free from from a long time was wars and enmities there were enemies everywhere he had to write some tree he said many are they that rise up against me he says many are they that say where is your help he says there is no help for him in God this was not a song this was a testimony and there are many of us who are like David you leave Lagos to Abuja there is another set of attack waiting for you you relocate to UK two weeks you run back because the trouble there the one here looks better to solve all kinds of problems he says many not few are they that rise up against me and there are people saying there is no help for him again mm. he says I lay me down and I slept to a point that sleeping was a problem. How many people cannot sleep now because you are afraid of the call that wakes you? Could it be the call of a bad news? Could it be the call that someone is there, you finally lost, you are waiting for a court verdict, you do not even know. If there are people who are working but they don't know how else, how old or how, how much time they have working as free men. Because there is some court verdict somewhere and any moment the verdict may come. And if it comes against you, you may spend decades in the prison. It's a terrible thing to live in fear. Some of you have come tonight with medical reports. As I said, to come with your prayer requests and your points of contact. Others were coming with land certificates, but there are people who have come with a death sentence. Lifting it before God and say, Lord, show me mercy. And like Hezekiah, extend my life. I announce to you again, there is he that can calm the storm. The disciples, even at their best, may not have the ability to calm the storms, but he can calm the storms. Is someone learning? This is the miracle service. Don't be distracted. It is the word that comes into your spirit that builds you. The miraculous operates upon the wings of the hearing of faith. There is something you need to hear that activates possibilities. Releasing the anointing, commanding the healing, praying over the request. That is something that God can do in a moment. But this foundation of the word becomes the basis of your stability, even in the times that we live in. When you are tested and you shake and you chicken out, it is because your foundation is not strong. Hallelujah. 
So storms bring losses and pain. Now, Jesus taught us something very profound that in dealing with storms, I wrote here, rebuking the wind or the spirit, as I have taught you, should be your first action. Please look up. One of the most classic information we need to learn about storms is that storms are made of two elements. Please look up. Storms are made of first the wind and then the water or the waves. Are we together? I have taught you here that the water is the visible part of the storm. That is the one that can shake the boats. That is the one that can shake your destiny. The water there talks about the physical environment, the physical situation. But that powering that water is the wind. Usually the invisible part, the spirit that is behind what is driving your life to perdition, to pain, to fear. And if you are dealing with storms and your focus is just the water, meaning the office situation, meaning the situation of your health or your marriage, you are dealing with the storm wrongly. In dealing with storms, the first approach is the wind before the water. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that Jesus, verse 39, when he arose, the Bible never said he rebuked the water. No. The water was only a slave. The water was a puppet to the wind. If the wind were calm, the water will also be calm. If the wind were boisterous, the water will reflect it. That means what is happening in your office is not an office issue. It's a spirit issue. Listen very carefully. What is working in your finances? There may be a place where you are neglecting the laws of finances, but more than that, it's not just a financial issue. It can be a spirit issue. Powering every storm that you see is the wind. The Bible says Jesus rebuked the wind. He did not rebuke the water. The water does not necessarily need to be rebuked. The water is a reaction. The anger in your office is a reaction. The antagonism and the enmity among people is a reaction. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We deal with storms by rebuking the wind, then speaking to the water. Rebuking the wind, then speaking to the water. One more time. Rebuking the wind and speaking to the water. Because the wind usually typifies spirits. There are spirits, elemental spiritual forces that are back of the pain, the tragedy, the rep repetitive circles in people's lives and most times because we are usually sensual in dealing with the matters of life we focus only on the water so for instance you keep discussing the business why is this favor happening around my life I'm a hard-working businessman why is it that I will get an information that by next week the contract is coming only for me to find out that it's been given to someone else because if you focus on the rage of the sea and forget that the sea is only a victim of the wind storms I repeat again are made up of winds it is not the anger or the problem between a husband and a wife. That is just the sea. I can assure you there is a spirit behind it. The disfavor that happens in your life, surrounded by helpers, yet ignored by the same. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of headache. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of unemployment. Watch this. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of your finances and all of these issues. He goes to the spirits that are behind them, masquerading behind a lot of things. Whilst you are holding your certificate, dropping it from table to table, office to office, there are spirits raging all kinds of things. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are certain winds that need to be rebuked. For someone, that wind has shifted your family from joy to pain. You have found yourself moving from one place to the other. All kinds of things have happened, swaying your boat, and you are in fear right now. Water has even gotten into the boat, and they walk Jesus. Don't forget that those guys were farmers. Careless thou, not that we perish. Hallelujah. Jesus teaches us how to deal with storms the first thing to do is that there is a spirit behind that hatred there is a spirit behind that poverty there is a spirit behind whatever it is he rebuked the wind 
And as I have taught you here, when he got to gathering, the Bible reveals to us the reason why what you call the wind, I hope you know they were the spirits because he was coming to Gadara to bring salvation to that city. So the spirits came and were causing a lot of commotion, hoping that the boat would capsize. Could it be that the fight in your destiny and that which has impeded you now is simply because you are the first to rise. Some of you, you are the ones that I have told you this thing many times. There is a mantle upon your life and you are the one who has been mandated to be the deliverer of your family and the storms will leave every other person and come to you. You may not even know why. For some of you, you say, who did I offend? That is not an intelligent way. That's not spiritual intelligence. It's not about who are you offending. It's about where you are going to. The story starts in verse 35 by saying, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Let us go to the place of breakthrough. Let us go to the place of increase. Let us go to the place of plenty. The axe head that fell. Remember, the sons of the prophet came and met Elisha, their mentor, and he said, where we meet with you is too straight for us. Let us go beyond the Jordan. It was the desire for increase and expansion that led to the falling of the axe head. The attack on your life. Is it not because of the seriousness of your prayer life? The moment you realize that you were the one God was going to use to deliver your family, that that mantle of a deliverer after the order of Moses was upon your life, all kinds of attacks began to come around your life. My Bible says, but thanks be to God, which causes us to triumph always, not sometimes, always. It says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. What does Jesus do when he comes? He does not come to negotiate with storms. When Jesus comes, listen, the Bible tells us that Jesus was in the boat, but his presence in the boat did not automatically bring deliverance. Now, this is where I want you to listen. Jesus in your boat is hope that you will not be lost, but water will still be entering your boat until you know what to do with Jesus there. It took the effort of the people. The Bible says even in unbelief, they took effort to wake him. It was a sign of humility. Waking Jesus is proof that your intelligence has been stretched. You have done your best. You do not have the power in yourself to save yourself. Don't assume that just because Jesus is in your boat, he will automatically know that he's a right to help you. There is always a demonstration of humility. The Lord is night them that call upon him not them that are where he is there in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart and it says lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him simple but profound statement do you know what it means to acknowledge to acknowledge means to recognize his value and his usefulness not just his presence when you acknowledge a man is more than recognizing his presence you can recognize the presence of a man without acknowledging that person to acknowledge that person is to recognize and celebrate that person as touching his usefulness to you so Jesus was in the boat, but whether he was useful to them or not would depend on their sense of responsibility. They would have jumped out of the boat, it was an option. They would have committed suicide, it was an option. They would have been offended to kill him and insult him, it was an option. The Bible says they went and woke him. They did not wake him because he was weak. They woke him because it will always take faith. So God is there, but your faith needs to let him know, Father arise, I, I, he cannot assume that you need his help. You must call upon him as a sign of humility. There are many of you who are conscious of the ever abiding presence of God, but you do not know how to engage God to arise and perform for you. It takes humility. I will call upon the Lord, not assume that he is there. I will call upon the Lord. Jesus was near ba blind Bartimaeus but proximity did not equal a miracle blind Bartimaeus had to call thou son of David have mercy on me the one who calms the storm can be around your finances can be around your marriage can be around your children but you do not call upon him he assumes that you are saying I am in control of everything and he will respect you some of you have come here you are aware that Jesus is here wonderful but that is not enough to give you a miracle 
waking him is a sign of a declaration of humility from you lord you need to arise over my case the bible says there was this judge who did not fear god nor regard men and there was this widow who had been so victimized she walked on to the man the awareness that there was a judge who could bail her out did not bail her out she had to take responsibility to go to the judge and say avenge me my adversary this she did once and again and the bible says the judge had to tell him Himself, that though I do not fear God nor regard men but this woman continues to wear me by her continual coming she can weary me by her persistence apostle but I prayed in January pray again how many of you have seen how they wake someone from sleep sometimes do you just tap someone once and he wakes up especially for some of you who sleep like you are dead even a punch will not wake you. There are people who sleep like they are dead. They talk while they are still sleeping. And you'll be thinking they are already awake. Oh, how are you? God bless you. And yet they are sleeping. They are not even aware of what they are saying. Just because someone is talking does not mean he's awake. To awake somebody means to bring him to the awareness of your situation. The awareness of the environment. Is someone learning tonight? father arise yes there are thousands of people tonight but there's a hymn as is it a hymn that says it's me oh lord coming having a need of prayer it is me oh lord tonight is for everybody but you're not being selfish if you focus on yourself tonight to say lord i thank you for everyone but i'm the one who is wearing this shoe and i'm the one who knows the shame and the reproach and the pain and discouragement and everything in between that i've gone through and tonight i am insisting that you do a quick work in my life hallelujah the things that are written aforetime the bible declares they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope the Lord has mandated that we come with points of contact. Some of you, your certificate, your business, your CAC registration, whatever it is that you have come with, you will be surprised that thing has been in your house for a long time. Some of you even kept a Bible on top of it and yet it did not solve any problem. Because being aware that the one who calms your storm is there does not automatically calm it. Please learn this lesson. You must learn to call upon the Lord as a sign of humility. Prayer and a cry for help is proof of humility from the saints. Jesus looks at a man who is blind and tells him, what should I do for you? You would think that was a sarcastic statement. There are no assumptions. He gave you a will. The man at Gate Beautiful was not looking for healing. He was looking for arms. The apostles wanted to give him something greater. But they needed to tell him, look, so I do silver and gold I do not have. But such as I have, give I unto you. Are you willing to receive it? Clearly the man was offended. I'm sure he frowned his face and said, please carry your trouble and go and pray. And the Bible says Peter loved him too much to leave him in that situation. He stretched forth his hand and he lifted him up and he leaping stood and found out he could run and jump his ankles, his knees, receive strength. Please look at me. There are some of you who came tonight and your prayer request is money. But what will come from heaven to you is wisdom. Because if God gives you money, that money can finish. Some of you have received favor. But the reason why favor is not speaking is because favor needs wisdom to last. If favor comes alone, it will keep bringing and it will keep being destroyed because of lack of wisdom. For some of you, you came to find wisdom. For some of you, you came to find direction. For some of you, the truth is that before wisdom comes, you need bread to land on your table first. Because the hunger, hunger can be anything. The hunger that is on your table right now, you, you are not looking for a farm yet. You may not even live to watch the crops grow. You need bread to satisfy you first. And my Bible says it's able to satisfy us with good things. For some of you, you came here and your cries for increase in membership and what God wants to give you is a renewed heart because the real secret is your heart condition, not your publicity. Heart condition, not publicity. Posters don't bring men. I assure you on that. 
Social media advertisement only informs men. It does not bring men. What brings men is the business that you and God does in the secret. And he honors you by causing spirits to noise abroad his hand upon your life. That is a business of the secret place. Please listen and learn. The secret to publicity is not to make noise physically. It's to have a track record and a covenant with God in the secret. And he who becomes the chief witness of your diligence and your love and passion for him, he knows what to do with men, even as the father of spirits. Hmm. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are here. The real issue in your life is not stagnation. The real issue is lack of direction. Speed is useless when there is no direction. Where are you running to? Hallelujah. Imagine that you are running into a sea. You have speed, but your speed is only going to cause you trouble. The first thing God gives you is direction before he gives you speed. Where do I need to go to? The Bible says, and your ear shall hear a voice saying, this is the way walk ye in it. Hallelujah. And like our precious people sang, for some of you, what you came to receive is restoration. Do you know what it means to restore? I have taught you and I will keep teaching you. To restore is beyond making progress. Progress simply talks about incremental steps towards the direction of your goals and your destiny. Restoration is God picking your yesterday and still putting time to your yesterday again so that the possibilities that would have happened to you yesterday reappears into your today again. It's called restoration. And for some of you, what you came for is power, period. You just came for an encounter with genuine power. No amount of sermon to really do the job. With all humility, you have heard the teaching. You are like the disciples of Jesus. You've spent your three and a half years receiving good spiritual lectures. But a lecture alone will not take over Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Some of you have come for an encounter power from on high to land upon your head like I taught you last week to land upon your hand and to land upon your feet remember what I taught you last week that grace that comes upon your head is for illumination and direction grace that comes upon your hand is for productivity and grace that comes upon your feet is for direction and for speed you don't use your head to walk you use your head to think but if you are mad your leg cannot walk because your head will keep misleading your leg it will not even move am i right on that there are people who cannot walk because they have brain damage they have all kinds of things their feet is still well but that central system of coordination has gone wrong so for some of you when we say power most people just think anointing for miracles there are three aspects of your life or three areas in your body that need this impartation. Your head, illumination, light. Father, what is beclouding my understanding and my thinking? Confusing me so that I'm not able to have vision. The Bible says without vision, the people cast off restraint. They perish. And then for another person, your prayer is for God. Your head is thinking. But your hand cannot move because like Samson, it has been bound with chains. You need that, 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 that chain to be broken so that your hands can move. Productivity. Hallelujah. As powerful as your head is, you do not carry a bucket of water with your head. You do not carry the keys to your house with your head. You don't drive with your head. Your head does the thinking, but the actual driving is done by your hands. And then for many, your feet. As powerful as your hands are, you can do exercises and bend with your hand, but your hand is not responsible for walking. Your head can think as well as it wants to. Your hand can be as agile and productive as it is. But if your leg, have you seen people, respectfully speaking, who were amputated? You see how incapacitated they are? Or perhaps people who are intelligent, they think well and are without limbs, or those who are confined in wheelchairs, their hands are working well, their head is working well, but their speed is limited. God wants to bring grace for someone. And there are some of you who will get all three, because this is what you need, all three. That it's coming on your head afresh again, coming on your hand again. Listen to me, you cannot prosper if grace does not, the power to prosper does not come on your head alone. These three areas, you want to really prosper, 
it must come upon your head in your light we see light it must come upon your hands so that the works of your hands are blessed and then it must come upon your feet so you walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise hallelujah I'm taking our time to teach so that when we start praying and when I start ministering to you it's going to be a quick walk this is what we came to do tonight I always pray and prepare that the miracle services are most productive in the life of the people and it's not just by shouting amen and fire is by understanding this that you are receiving is what makes your receiving the miracle potent and lasting so that you don't just fall down and stand up for nothing you know what came upon you if an impartation comes upon you now you have enough intelligence to know what to do with it oh so this grace apostle spoke about it just came upon me lord thank you for the one that has come upon my head thank you for the one that has come upon my hand you go back home and lay those hands and say in the name of jesus my hands are blessed may they begin to work my mind is blessed i have the mind of christ did elihu not say there is a spirit in man he says the inspiration this is where it is inspiration is not in the hand inspiration is not in the feet it happens right here the breath of the almighty can make men of understanding hallelujah praise the name of the lord these are my contemplations for this miracle service but tonight god has anointed me to come here because all of these storms that are raging around our lives, some of you, you have cried and said, God, where are you? Now you will understand that he's always been with you, but perhaps you have not called on him. You've been lamenting. Lamentation is not calling on God. Discussing the situation is not calling on God. Please listen to me. You call on God by being vocal, unashamed. You see, if blind Batim, you called God with some kind of dignified, you know, pedigree conscious call. Thou son of David, is this how you're going to pass me? Or will you turn around and all that English, they would have passed him, he would have remained there. He shouted. Someone needs to be angry when it's time to pray. Keep a bit of your, respectfully speaking, all of those, those polished dignity. Thank God for it. But you are the one who knows where the shoe is hurting. You will cry with all your heart and say, thou son of David, this reproach that has come upon my family, that my family has been called Ichabod, that every time people want to consider pain and losses, it looks like they make reference to my family. You can stand in faith and agree with God tonight. My assignment is to midwife your miracle and it's going to be a very quick one. You have written your requests already. Make sure, listen, the part of the Spirit, leave that one to me and God. We know what to do about it. Are we together? But having done that, the Spirit's part, you must be willing. You will use your own mouth and speak to the waters, the problems, and say in Jesus' name, you have come thus far, no further. I have cried, my crying stops here. I'm not leaving this place crying again. It has to be over in the name of Jesus. Did my Bible not say even weeping has a time period that it endures but for a night? Is that in your Bible? So why have you been crying for one year? Has night and morning and night and morning and night and morning not come again? You are breaking the law. You are giving your weeping strength beyond its jurisdiction. The moment the sun begins to arise, you wipe your tears. Yes, you wipe your tears. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world Hallelujah. For someone God is speaking to you Stop crying Put on your armory of a warrior 
you have cried too long your grandfather cried gave birth to children who joined him crying your parents have cried will you continue crying and transfer tears to your children tonight is the night that you will get up and put on that regalia there has to be someone who comes in the spirit of Gideon in the spirit of Deborah someone who will get up and say no storms you must come to an end is someone ready to pray for one minute before I begin to speak over your life all over this auditorium scattered outside and the thousands following online lift your voice in one minute and begin to speak in the name of Jesus Christ every storm around my life every storm around my finances hear ye the word of the Lord you come to an end tonight are there people of prayer in this place go ahead and pray Storms are made up of winds and water, winds and water. There is a spirit component. There is a physical expression. When the spirit component is dealt with, every other thing will fall into place. Jesus did not have to drive the sea away. He did not have to drive the water away. He rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. Shalom, be still. Shalom, be still. Take a minute to pray. Be angry in your spirit as you pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you are in my boat. But arise, thou shall arise. You are seated, but thou shall arise. Someone is praying, thou shall arise. Thou shall arise. He said, let God arise. 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 Let God arise over your family. Let God arise over your finances. Let God arise over your health. Let God arise. Hallelujah. 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 Please bring out every point of contact that you have. If you don't have anything, no problem. You just lift your hand. Whatever, not your prayer request, any point of contact, whether your documents, whatever it is, just lift it up. I want, we're going to pray. And I want you to watch the wonder working power of the God of heaven. I'm serving the God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. I am serving the God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. One more time. I am serving the God of miracles. The Bible says in Acts chapter 19 that handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the bodies of Paul. That it was taken to people who were diseased and they were spirits. The handkerchiefs and the, the points of contact could not speak but something was placed upon them. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. What you are doing is not just some, some this is a proper biblically supported prophetic act. And I want you to believe in what you are doing because you will return with testimonies that will marvel you. Yeah. And for those who are watching from across the globe, following from your home, any and every viewing center across the globe, I want you to connect. You don't have a point of contact, that's all right. You can lift your hands. Your hand represents your productivity. I want to pray for you. 
I just felt stirred in my spirit to deal with this because there are many people here. Some of you are lifting photos of people. Some of you are lifting. I see people lift all kinds of things. Your profession, your, your, your lawyer and all kinds of things. Medical people, certificates and all of those things. Let me pray to the God who answers. Mm. He says unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The same way you are lifting this, that is the same way I lift you to a higher level. The same way you are lifting this point of contact, I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic. I shift you to a higher level, a higher level in your career, a higher level in business, a higher level in your social experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The wind is blowing in this room, yet it did not blow what you are lifting to calm down. Therefore, I declare, nothing brings you down from today. <laughs> nothing brings you down from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Upon all your points of contact, right from this altar, let an unction from heaven, let an anointing, the grace for favor, the grace for speed, the grace for visibility, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. Hallelujah. For someone, as you lifted this, you lifted it for your helper to see you in the spirit. You I say it again. You only lifted it for your helper to see you in the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I clear away every storm that is stopping your helpers from seeing you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, when there is a very clear sky in the night, you stand and you can see the stars unhindered. But when the cloud midwives your vision, you only look up and you can see a dark hazy night. And yet beyond that dark hazy night, there are beautiful stars that are shining. But you are not able to see them because the clouds have come to cover your visibility. Are we together? I want to pray for you. I don't know what cloud has come in between you and all those who must see you. If you don't believe it, you can put down your hand. But I'm praying for someone who believes in the power of prophetic repositioning that you can be repositioned by prophecy so that those who need you can see you. I compel them again to see you. I compel them again to see you. I compel them again to see you. When you turn to the north, they will see you. When you turn to the south, they will see you. When you turn to the east, they will see you. When you turn to the west, they will see you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me a padlock. I'm seeing a padlock and a padlock seals it can be good if it is preserving but it can be dangerous if it is stopping i don't know seeing this god is showing me that means that there might be someone your destiny you might be lifting this but in the realm of the spirit either by some demonic manipulation there are things that have been locked and in the name of jesus i call upon he that has the key of david shakas Everything locked, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Please be sensitive, I'm still praying.
in the name of Jesus I pray it again as you are standing here for some of you what God is opening is not your own it's for your loved ones they are they are far somewhere but you know their life has been locked by the mercy of God right from this place may their destinies open up open up open up open up open up open up in the name of Jesus Christ please help them You will be amazed at the things that will happen from tonight's miracle service. In the name of Jesus. Please drop, if you can, just drop your points of contact. Drop it on the floor and then you'll pray in one minute. Not on your seat, just obey instructions. Just drop it on the ground there. It's nothing, just drop it on the ground. And I want you to lift your voice and begin to pray in one minute. That in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus listen listen let me explain to you what you are doing so you don't just think you are acting foolishly the earth I have taught you is one of the five elements of the supernatural the earth is a universal point of contact the same way you are matching the ground your helper is also matching the ground somewhere and you are not placing it on the ground just as some kind of dull ritual you are doing this with understanding that in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead as you have placed it on this ground in the name of Jesus as a point of contact let it start calling all those who need to show up in your life let it start calling all those who need to show up in your life listen I stand by God to tell you you will be afraid of the kinds of testimonies that will be shared here by reason of this listen for some of you as you have placed this on the ground there is somebody who is waking up for your sake and they don't even know what is waking them up for someone issues are being revisited in the spirit issues are being revisited in the spirit issues are being revisited in the spirit hear me for some of you what you dropped on the ground is paper but you are picking your land what you dropped on the ground is paper but you are picking your house i'm not motivating you what you dropped on the land is paper but you are picking your children you are picking your job you are picking your increase in the name of jesus now watch this the last explanation as to what you are doing when moses brought his rod watch this the lord did not tell him lift it up he said cast it on the ground that holy ground when Moses placed it on the ground a number of spiritual activities happened he said pick it back up when he picked it it no longer was called the rod of Moses it became the rod of God that which you have dropped on the ground in the name of Jesus by dropping it on the ground you have handed over the case to this warrior called El Shaddai oh it is no longer your battle in the name of Jesus Christ let the multi breasted one arise for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ pick up what you have dropped now and begin to give thanks by faith Lord I receive by faith Lord I receive by faith I receive by faith I receive by faith I receive by faith strange testimonies by faith mighty manifestations by faith higher levels in the spirit by faith in the name of Jesus Christ now please drop it down I'm going to collect your prayer request but the Lord is leading me carry your prayer request the same way you took this you can drop this pick up your prayer request except if it's the same thing you dropped still pick it up I want you, you are going to hold it I will pray on it before you hand it over to the ushers we're organized people but we're people of the spirit when the Holy Spirit decides to move bring two people for me who will run now there is a reason why I always ask that that happens and some of you I'm sure you are amazed why do people just start running up and down 
Um, it doesn't have to happen. These things are signs and wonders. They carry deep spiritual connotations. Two people, the hand of God in, in this auditorium now, and they will just start running. Please help them whether you're an usher or not, and I want you to bring them out. This is a spirit, this is, this is a ministry by the spirit. Hallelujah. Bring them out for me. I'm about to pray over your request. Hear what I'm hearing in my spirit. Before August 25th. Before August 25th. I don't know what this means. Listen, this is what I just had. Before August 25th. Can I speak it over your life? I don't know what it is you are trusting God for. For some of you, you have prayed, you have even sown seeds. But I'm saying it as one sent by God. As I have heard from God, before August 25th, let there be a strange manifestation. Before August 25th, let there be a strange manifestation of the hand of God, the favor of God, the grace of God, extraordinary increase, strange doors open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. They come out like this sometimes as a prophetic message that God is speaking to someone in the name of Jesus I don't know what has kept you behind but in the name that is above all names the same kind of grace that came on these people to bring them forward I push you forward now I push you forward now go forward in Jesus name go forward in Jesus name go forward in Jesus name some of you listen going forward will mean jumping over mountains going forward will mean crossing seas by all godly means go forward go forward go forward the lord is asking me to declare mercy upon people who are owing financially this is what i'm hearing please i want you to believe this the prophetic has always been the scriptural solution to any kind of financial predicament there is a place of value, productivity, intelligence, relationships, but not without the prophetic. I decree and declare. I don't know what financial situation you might be in right now. Maybe carelessness, maybe mistakes. It does not matter in whatever form it came. This is the house of God. I decree and declare. Perhaps that was why God said before August 25th for someone. I decree and declare. I tie that prophetic word to this speaking before August 25th come out of that situation please don't be tired give me a chance to speak into your life can I still speak over your finances don't reject financial blessings don't allow ignorance make you reject it you will suffer it will cause you problems you cannot imagine we are not marketing carnality and lust and flesh. If you are incapacitated financially, it is one of the worst attacks that can happen to a man in his life. I pray for you. The Bible says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. You heard the testimonies of the people here. And by a prophet, I will teach you principles that grant you wisdom and help you maximize that which the prophetic brings. But as for this night, my own is to release by the prophetic that grace programming a climate of favor compelling men to come speedily to come with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh in the name of Jesus I call helpers to your life strategic financial relationships in the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus 
whilst you are standing please ushers quickly collect just you can pass the prayer request to the last person at the aisle i'm going to be laying hands on it and then ushers will pick it um, maybe some persons help the ushers for those outside let's do it fast god is granting us grace hallelujah now everybody please pay attention i want to rebuke a few spirits before i pray over this i told you that every storm is made up of winds you have been shouting amen but now let me do the praying for you i don't tolerate evil spirits i don't tolerate unclean spirits we are mandated to cast them anywhere we see them and for as long as i am alive let me tell you the truth everything that plagues god in your life he must let you go this night yeah. hallelujah i want to pray for you now and ushers thank you so much for all that you do there is a reason why i ask people to come we want to rebuke devils and they shall cast out devils upon man zion the bible declares that there shall be holiness and the bible says that um, the sons of jacob shall possess their possession deliverance and holiness L ladies and gentlemen please hear me for some of you you may not know the kinds of spirits that stand as resistance stopping you stopping things from coming to you the spirits that are raging they are bringing all kinds of storms that nothing good seems to come to your life hallelujah have you ever seen uh, some kind of tornado or wind and water disaster it can wipe away farms in a moment wipe away houses in a moment in a matter of minutes people will lose billions of dollars worth of lives and property that's what storms can do the bible says in isaiah 32 and verse 15 that until the spirit be poured upon us from on high it says that the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine and the fruitful field be counted for a forest hallelujah so i'm going to speak over your life and for many of you you will be surprised that these strange demonic devilish spirits begin to manifest because they have been masquerading around your finances around your health hallelujah i may not even need to pray healing for some of you because by this prayer you find out that a miracle happens now all i want you to do please just follow instructions and follow me my job is to help you receive you are going to shout at the count of three you're going to shout that name jesus why do we shout that name it's a prophetic act but number two it is also to stir up your faith a way of connecting your faith to what god is doing and the power of God will rest upon people. Every spirit that is not of God, hiding behind your life, your family, this is the time it must let you go. The spirit that makes as good as you are, all that people see in your life is evil. They run away from you. You don't know why good people are leaving you. Are we together? That beauty and glory must be restored this night. Are you ready now? At the count of three, once I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. And then for the ushers or all who can help them, just bring those under the anointing here as I begin to rebuke them. Father, you gave us authority over spirits. And you said to cast away unclean spirits that plague men, that plague destinies, the spirits that continue to raise storms in the lives of people. And tonight, oh God, I decree and declare, standing by your grace, even the apostolic and the prophetic, that as I speak over your people and as they shout, everything that has not been planted by my Father, that in the name of Jesus it must give way. I announce to every spirit that in the name of Jesus your time is up. You must let families go. Are you ready to shout now? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command that devil leave God's people now leave God's people now please bring them out very quickly in the name of Jesus out of their destinies now release their destinies let them go please whether you are an usher or not help them come to the front let's do that very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ be released now activities of witchcraft wizardry ancestry in the mighty name of jesus be delivered now be delivered now
Please, if there's anyone under the anointing close to you, you don't have to wait for the ushers. Bring them out. Let's hurry up and save time. Once someone is under the anointing close to you, just pick them out gently and bring them in front here. There's a reason why we ask them to come. As many as the ushers are, they are very limited because they are doing so many things now. I'm still praying. Bring them out. Parus Kadiata. Every family here that has been tied by the covenant of ancestry that men do not rise whether you come from any of the six geopolitical regions in nigeria or any place in africa right now let the fire of the holy ghost visit the foundation of every family let the fire visit the foundations of every family and bring liberty in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hear me I have taught you here on the mystery of altars that an altar is a system of authorization that gives permission to spirits yokes that do not allow men rise in various families educated but not productive i decree and declare those altars are destroyed now destroyed now hear me there are altars that must make women in many families cry if they don't cry in marriage they will cry either as mothers if they are parakatos kiata. As I'm saying this, I just saw fire. I don't know which daughter of Abraham. Help them now. Which daughter of Abraham has been under this siege that the women in every family do not have the cause to rejoice? Be delivered now. 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 Kala sada ke vereka toska praga de belega tosh. Shabran de ke vreska de berekoska. Egreka de berega de kasiya. Generational patterns of sickness. I want to destroy it now. Generational patterns of sickness. Grandfather died of cancer. Mother died of cancer. Now the children are having it. Or diabetes. Every generational pattern. I stand by the God who called me. In the name of Jesus. And by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant. Help them please. I break those patterns now. Patterns of sickness. Be broken now. Patterns of sickness. Be broken now. untimely death people never live the fullness of their days something must destroy them anyone here marked for death that there is a sign of death upon your life I take it away from you now I take it away from you now and I speak to you the fullness of your days you will fulfill hallelujah that you hear that someone just left his house in peace and then a bike bike motorbike just comes to destroy a great destiny and waste the destiny don't tell me it just happened can i pray two more prayers for you please look at me we call it many names in the body of christ others call it rise and fall others call it the absence of longevity of impact i don't care what you call it the spirit knows who i'm thinking about anything that makes lifting rising prosperity growth to be short-lived in your life that every time you see things they don't last that good things never stay in your hand in the name of jesus i cry unto the god of my covenant this night that yoke is broken this night that yoke is broken this night that yoke is broken this night that yoke is broken
Do you believe what you are receiving? Let me pray for you now. Please listen to this final prayer. Every time the devil cannot get you, he will find someone who means a lot to you and attack them because attacking those close to you, listen to what I'm saying, attacking those close to you will eventually affect you in every way as though it was your own personal attack. Hallelujah. So if the devil tries to throw the dart of sickness and because of your spiritual understanding, prophetic covering and all these systems of advantage, you escape from it. By the time it hits, respectfully speaking, your mother or father or husband or wife or children or those who mean close to you, there is a way that Satan promotes generational poverty by handpicking all the destiny helpers and killing them. Is it not in your Bible that when a deliverer was born, every other child died like that even jesus mass destruction is satan's activity the bible calls him a murderer right from beginning killing does not mean anything to the devil he can use men structure situations to kill good things john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but i am come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly I want to cover all those connected to you and if you love them please open up your heart to receive this because the error of hearing bad news from people around you that troubles your faith and troubles your confidence we must stand in prayer believing that there is a God he said as for me and my house not me alone me and my house I decree and declare over your life in the name of Jesus the son of the living God as God has shielded and protected you, I extend the same covering to your loved ones. I extend the same covering to your loved ones. I extend the same covering to your loved ones. There shall be no loss. There shall be no death. The waster will not come near your habitation. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone here who came here believing God for a healing miracle. Please listen. I want to give one command. You can always have the time to testify. But I want to pray. I don't know where you are, but in one minute, just place your hand where you are trusting God for a miracle. You had the testimony of the gentleman. Don't go back and allow what you tolerate will grow. What you tolerate and give excuses for will continually multiply. Are we together now? When Satan came and arranged for the killing of James, the church kept quiet and the Bible says they went further. They proceeded further to apprehend Peter. But the church became angry. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 5, the Bible says, But prayer was made unto God of the church, unto God for him. The church said, No, we will not allow this to happen again. And there was an intervention. Ah, no. Every spirit that is not of God must leave this night. Yeah. Apostle, how will I know the spirit has left? Because the storm will no longer be there. Yeah. When Jesus rebuked the wind, then he spoke to the office situation. Then he spoke to the marriage situation. Then he spoke to the health situation and said, Shalom, be still. But not without rebuking the wind. Now let me pray over your body in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity roaming around any part of your body, failed or failing organs, malfunctioning organs, organs that have been cut out maybe by surgical procedures, deformed organs, blood conditions, hearing, seeing problems, mobility problems growth problems reproductory problems it doesn't matter in what form and fashion it has come in the name of jesus the son of the living god i bring the ministry of life now i bring the ministry of life now by the spirit of the living god life into your body be healed right now in jesus name 
let your blood be cleansed now in Jesus name genotypes change for good now every communicable disease in your body every disease that has come through the blood HIV and uh, any hepatitis it doesn't matter what name and what form I declare it leaves your body now in Jesus name <laughs> failing kidneys failing heart failing liver failing organs all kinds of problems in the name of Jesus I bring you the life and the power of Jesus be healed right now to the tiniest and even the silliest of all conditions if it was not so in the beginning let it be restored let it be restored there is a gentleman when you go to ease yourself you're easing out blood easing out blood in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you that satanic thing that gentleman is in this place the Lord just showed me that person in the name of Jesus you are healed now help him in the name of Jesus Christ there is someone your 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 lady your right breast you know is beginning to grow unusually that is a demonic case I don't want to mention anything that disturbs you but this is some kind of growth that we need to rebuke because with what I'm seeing it is it is cancer just looking for your body in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is the same way it entered your body let it live now the same way it came into your body let it live now there is a gentleman you are you are walking you walk well but you are you feel a lot of pains around your knee very severe pains around your knee that person the Lord is healing you right now because I'm seeing that this thing is, is, is like a symptom of arthritis the hand of the Lord is upon you right now for sake of time those who are in front here every evil spirit foul devil that has followed them here by the blood of the eternal covenant I command these spirits out you go off you go never to return in the name of Jesus Christ and everything you have taken from them their families their loved ones let there be a restoration in the name of Jesus Christ I just heard in my spirit good news I had in my spirit good news let me prophesy good news good news in the morning good news in the afternoon good news in the night good news one more time in the morning good news in the afternoon good news in the night good news good news means no more tears good news means no more sorrow good news means the pain of yesterday has gone with yesterday in the name of Jesus now wherever you are stretch your hands and begin to make faith declarations over these requests stretch your hands in one minute will you sing for me that song restore in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands everybody those following online you can stretch your hands by faith go ahead go ahead we have just one minute for this
the name of Jesus Christ as you have believed in the name that is above all names I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that by the power that raised Christ from the dead the answers to this miracle they will follow you wherever you go the answers to this request I command them to look for you and follow you they will look for you and follow you they will look for you and follow you in the mighty name of Jesus all the human vessels that must be in partnership with the Holy Ghost to make for answers to this request in the name of Jesus Christ we compel them by the power of the Holy Spirit they partner with the Holy Ghost to make for your answers in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I wrote three scriptures here in the place of prayer that the Lord gave me let me speak over your life number one Job chapter 5 and verse 12 let me just speak it over your life very quickly media help us Job 5 he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise hear me anybody who does not mean well for you may their hands never come close to your destiny Psalm 7, 15 and 16. These three scriptures came to me in the place of prayer. I was not even praying about them. They just came to my spirit. He made a pit and digged it and is falling into the ditch which he made. Verse 16. His mischief shall return upon his head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pit. Please hear me. In this season, may the god of vengeance may the god who is able to judge may he bring judgment to the works of the wicked over your life in the name of jesus christ last scripture isaiah 54 17. popular scripture but it came to my spirit in the place of prayer isaiah 54 17. it says no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper so everything is looking for prosperity including the devil including weapons they want to prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shall condemn the bible says this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their righteousness is of me i want to pray for you if any mouth must speak about you, let it be for good. Yeah. One more time. If any tongue must speak about you, let it be for good. Yeah. Every counsel of Ahitophel towards your helpers to manipulate them so that they do not treat you with favor. In the name of Jesus, we overturn this night. By the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ July is about to end the seventh month August begins as the eighth month eighth is the number of new beginning and the Bible says remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old he said for behold I do a new thing may that new thing anointing rest upon you new things in your spiritual life new things financially new things in your career new things in life and destiny hear me the spirit of the old all things i drive it far from your life in the name of jesus christ if I speak favor over you, are you still willing to receive? Until I see every one of us become a living epistle of the favor of God, I will not stop speaking it over your life. For some of you, it will take a while speaking it for you to come to the consciousness of the all-surpassing value of the favor of God in the life of a man. But for as many whose hearts are open and truly ready to receive, in Jesus' name.
one more time even this night receive favor favor with men favor with systems favor with structures be at peace with money in the name of Jesus Christ your daily bread needed for your efficiency per day per week per month let God bring it to your hands koinonia hear me by favor even in famine you shall laugh your children will laugh in the name of Jesus Christ I hope you know that favor is not just limited to things it takes favor to receive encounters with God when Gabriel came to Mary he said I am here because you are highly favored in other words it's not because your eyes were opened through prayer and fasting alone it takes favor when God the Bible says blessed is the man who God causes to appear to approach him the vistas of the spirit are not just open because you pursue in terms of prayer and fasting as important as that is there are men who can find favor with God and God can come to you open to you the vistas of your destiny let me pray for your spiritual life you have received things enough let's pray for nobler things in your life in the name that is above all names your prayer life every attack over your prayer life the diligence the discipline to travel until you evolve to become that superior believer receive that grace now receive that mantle now receive that anointing now receive that grace now the grace to wake up and pray and to pray till you establish things in your life number two receive the grace to have dominion over food some of you the unbecoming in your life is gluttony you can resist every other temptation but food everything god gave man he gave man control over the moment things dominate you you are oppressed in the name of jesus i decree and declare the grace to discipline yourself in prayer in fastings for the purpose of your spiritual growth receive it now let me pray for your word study life you know by now that the anchor to your stability and growth is a thorough methodical understanding of doctrine even the ways of God that in all your knowledge if there are gaps in your spiritual understanding you cannot become a person of stature so week in week out you are mentored shown the various facets of the Christian life to the end that you become robust built as Ephesians says should be I decree and declare the appetite for the word the appetite for study not just study to preach not just study to go on social media but study for your knowledge for your stability and for your understanding receive that grace now for many of you who have underutilized the ministry of the Holy Spirit the only circumference of our knowing him is just praying in tongues and then we stop there I pray for you that the deeper dimensions of intimacy that can drive men into that river with the Holy Spirit where with champions are made out of weakness where with strength is made where with destinies are birthed that men are molded and fashioned to become men of power and grace in the name of Jesus Christ I, I push you deeper into that relationship For someone here, your only prayer when you came is apostle, please pray that God will give me at least one good friend. I'm tired of liars in my life, tired of psychophants, tired of hypocrites. I don't know who that person is. May my God, the one who connects men, who takes men in solitary places and connects them to families, may he bring strategic people and connect you in the order of David and Jonathan. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if there is any wrong person, wrong company, wrong group of people misleading you, number one, from your walk with God, from your passion for the house of God, misleading you into perdition, 
I pray for you from this service, obtain grace to run as far as the east is from the west. In the name of Jesus. The level of spiritual power needed in your life for this season, power to overcome evil, power to ward off the arsenals of darkness, power to stand tall and see to it that the purposes of God are birthed in your life, the requisite level of spiritual power, the impartation in the order of Acts chapter 4, let it be rested upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is done. For in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray. For in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray. May you return with your testimonies. Strange testimonies. Even from tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let's all stand please if you can. Everyone please stand. I want to make a call to those who need to make it right with Jesus Christ tonight. There's no point flattering you, playing with words. Now you know how important Jesus is. He's not only the one who calms the storms. He is the Savior, the one crucified, exalted today, King, Lord, Christ, even the judge of all the earth. You are here and you do not have a functional relationship with Jesus. Maybe another Jesus. Maybe you have a relationship with religion. Maybe you have a relationship with a man of God, as important as that is. Jesus is calling you to make it right with him. And then for those of you who need to rededicate your life, you've just been playing games around your spiritual life and you truly want to mean business with Jesus. I want to count one to five very quickly. You will be our last miracle tonight before we leave. Wherever you are with boldness and without any sense of shame and fear, please make your way to the front. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nothing to be ashamed of. Come to Jesus. Come. Come. Koinonia, this is the greatest miracle. You know that. Celebrate them as they come. Their coming is the triumph of light over darkness. The victory of Jesus. By your spirit I will rise. From the ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hallelujah. God bless you. For all those who are connecting from across the globe, Please follow with the prayer and all the overflows wherever um, you're located. Just follow me as we pray. Thank you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, for making this noble decision. Jesus said, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You are coming before Jesus, the one who was crucified and is today exalted Lord and Christ. May I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to this Jesus. And that includes you who is praying in your home. That includes all those who are connecting from all the other expressions across the globe. The overflows right here. Please lift your hand in the same attitude of surrender. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus consciously and truthfully into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i have the life of god i go forward ever and backward never please keep your beautiful hands lifted and let me speak over your life father grace upon these ones to walk and live the victorious christian life i commend you to the word of god and to the ministry of the holy spirit and i declare that you are established in righteousness you go from glory to glory you go from grace to grace may you enjoy this new life 
and in the name of Jesus may you be established in the same the grace to walk and to live the victorious life I impart upon you in Jesus mighty and matchless name amen and amen thank you for this decision please let me request that you follow our counselors they are waving the placard let's celebrate them as they go they'll have a word with you very quickly and very briefly thank you koinonia let's keep clapping let's honor them hallelujah two quick announcements and we're done first thank you very much for your patience and then um for the month of august we're going to be examining a few very very important things we'll be doing a lot of praying um next week we'll fast we're fasting you can break anything from 3 p.m we say that because there are people who come right from morning and since we're not stretching 24 hours it's wise that and then especially for our children pregnant women um, except if you choose to but pregnant women and those who have um, any critical medical condition please you are exempted from the fast will fast for you in the name of Jesus Christ and children can fast they should fast they can and maybe by 12 1 let's give them the benefit of doubt so they can eat and relax but all of us together you can fast and obtain grace to stretch when we say fast make sure by Saturday you go to our social media platforms uh, perhaps they can be displayed so that you have it by the way if you are not connected to any or all our social media platforms realize that it is part of your covenant connection you are part of this house and you should be part of all our social media platforms so that you can receive updates on any and all ministry activities that includes the prayer points for our fasting so by saturday latest saturday um would we'll display the prayer points the prayer focus so that you can pray it if you don't pray you wasted your fasting or perhaps you just did it for health reasons hallelujah when we say fast make sure you engage in prayer fruitful prayer with intelligence with discipline and with determination so we're fasting will break by 3 um, p.m next week please invite everybody god is in a radical business of impartation and transformation i'm going to be showing you certain deep things in the kingdom as god grants us grace we're going to be accessing higher levels of light by the spirit so we go from glory to glory and for all of you who connect from around the world do ensure that you don't connect alone invite all who love jesus and all who um, desire growth genuinely in their spirit so that they are part of us one more time we celebrate all our international guests all our first timers and those who are worshiping with us this is your first time thank you so very much may the lord bless you in jesus name let's rise finally as we wrap up the service may the lord bless you in jesus name the week beginning is a week of blessings for you you step into august with honor and with grace in the mighty name of jesus christ together let's share the grace in fellowship when we're done do greet someone by your left and right on your way out of the auditorium the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget.